Welcome to another installment of the Strange Motion Way. This is a QA1 coilover install for the 88 to 98 Chevy and GMC C1500 trucks. The QA1 install does not require you to remove the bed. We're simply going to remove the bed so it's a lot easier to record it and for you to see exactly what we're doing. So if you have this on the lift like we do here, you can just jack it up and use jack stands. Just make sure it's very safe and it's very sturdy. Shake it before you get underneath of it. We also have some stands on the front of the truck. So when we're messing around up here, as short as the grab is, because you need to grab ahead of all these mounts here because you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You'll be removing these hangers and installing the new suspension mounts off of this. So you want the lift out of the way, so make sure when you start unbolting stuff that it's not tippy and it's going to fall off. So where you can't see, we do have a couple stands on the very front of the truck along with the lift to keep it all steady. So we've got it up on the lift. And we took the bed out of the way just so you can see what's going on a little better. Um, what are you doing over there? Taking off all the uh, brake lines, all the wires and the frames to get ready for the knot. And then I am loosening up the leaf spring mount. And we have the rear end weighted on a big set of jack stands we have. And I am unbolting the U bolts. All the hangers here is coming off. So you can see that the springs now are loose from the rear end. When I do the other side, the rear end will be just be hanging here on the stands. And then we'll, we'll get the leaf springs out of the way and we got to cut some brackets off. This is the factory bump stop where it has to be removed. The instructions actually say that you'll want to cut and grind the rivets off. Um, our truck is actually a 93 and these are bolted in. So we're just going to unbolt these. These holes will be uh, the locators for the C-notch pattern that we're going to use a little bit later. You also have to remove, obviously, the original shocks because of the length and the angles. We're putting coilovers on this so these shocks are not needed. Ryan is removing the shocks and then we'll cut the mounts off of the rear end. The upper passenger mount, we will drill and grind off the rivets and remove this mount. The driver's side does not need to be removed. If you choose, it can stay. The brake line has a couple bendable tabs that hold it down. We have to get in here and cut these brackets off. So you just take a screwdriver, bend these tabs out of the way, and you can get the brake line safely up out of harm's way. You don't want to yank it. Just, you can just bend the brake line a little bit. So here we are again, blessed and lucky that we have air tools and a big air compressor. We have to cut these rivets off and knock them through. This shock mount has to come out the same way with these front hangers have to come off. Um, you can do this with an electric grinder that you can buy at any hardware store for probably 40 bucks and a hammer and a punch. It's gonna take you a little bit longer this is not a fun job, but it's something that has to be done to remove these. I'm going to take this cutoff wheel. I have glasses, gloves, and ear protection on because it's a noisy. Be careful on which direction you shoot the sparks. I'm going to put a couple X's in it, cut through it, and then hit it with the air chisel to knock them off. So I cut it, air chiseled it, one down, 11 more to go. The passenger front shock mount must be removed. The original suspension on these, 
the shocks to keep the rear end a little more stable. The passenger runs this way and the driver's one runs towards the back. The upper driver's mount does not need to be removed, but the passenger one does. We cut the rivets, air chiseled them out. Only took a few minutes, might take you a little longer if you got to use an electric grinder and an air hammer or a hammer and a punch. Might need some persuasion. There was three rivets holding that one on. And now I'm gonna move on to these front hangers right here. That's the bed mount, you leave that there. This is where the original leaf spring mounted. We're gonna remove all this with the same way with the cutoff wheel and the air hammer and get them out of the way because the new suspension will mount right there. So the driver's side front leaf spring hanger, again, we're removing the hangers because the new suspension mounts will go to it. We have uh, emergency brake stuff that goes through here. Um, it's, you don't have to unhook them. You gotta have a cutoff wheel anyway. This is gonna be really careful. I'm gonna cut notches in those and pull them out of the way. But for safety, we're gonna put a welding blanket Make sure you have no gas leaks anywhere because sparks and gasoline do not mix well. So we're gonna put this moving blanket on here, our welding blanket. Try to keep some of the sparks off of there. Now I'm going to cut and knock those out just like I did on the other side. Ryan took the four bolts off the drive shaft. We still have the rear end up on jack stands holding it. And then this allows it so as to pivot it around a little bit because we have to cut the driver's shock mount off which is on the rear of the housing and the passenger one is on the front of the housing if they cut them off and grind that smooth. And we have a fully equipped shop here. You can use a cutoff wheel and a grinder to cut this off. We're gonna speed up the process and use a plasma cutter. So I cut them off with the plasma cutter. Now I'm gonna go get the electric grinder and clean it up. They send you this really handy template to do the C-notch on the frame. If you remember, we unbolted, or some trucks you have to grind off the rivets for the original snubbers. That goes on the bottom of the frame. That lines it up. Line up those two bolts on those two factory holes. Arrow points towards the front. You will mark these two holes 
That'll help line up the C-notch two bolts. Take a marker, trace this all out. That'll leave this area that you will cut out of the frame for the C-notch that we will drill and bolt in. We showed you how to use the supplied cardboard template and we cut that out. Again, you can use a cutoff wheel. You can take half the day and probably use a Sawzall too, but again, we are lucky to have a very well-equipped shop, so we hurried up the process and used a plasma cutter. So we cut that out of the way. Those two holes that we used off the cardboard template is your locator for this. Make sure those line up right where you mark them. and clamp it into place, and then we will drill and bolt it up. So we're doing one side at a time. Cut the C-notch and bolted this side in before we cut the other C-notch out, just to make sure, 100% sure that the frame does not flex any. So we've got all the bolts in here. Ryan's drilling the other side, and you wanna to torque these to 49 foot-pounds. Again, you will need a torque wrench to do this. There's a lot of stuff that has to be torqued at a certain specification. This is not a very expensive torque wrench. It's not a digital one. It's just a clicking one. So a little bit ago, we took the rivets off of where the original leaf springs mounted right through here. We're going to use the back two bolts holes, which will locate the new trailing arm mount. I'm going to tighten that up and then that'll tell you where these bolts need to be drilled. So we're going to use the new trailing arm bracket. It lines up from the original back bolts of the leaf spring mount. And on this side, driver's side, is the one that's a little bit more difficult to put on because we removed the bed again so you can see. And it does help to get your hands in here. And Ryan has smaller hands, so he's going to put this in here. At the same time here, we bolt up the new emergency brake cable bracket. That'll locate it, and then we drill the back two holes and bolt that up and torque it. Torque these bolts also to 49 foot-pounds. Now we have the axle mounting pads. These will line up on the original rear end mountings. This pin lined up the original leaf springs. This has got a pin that sticks out. You'll line that up, clamp it on, and then we'll drill those holes out to 5 eighths.
QA1 kit, they label each section of the install with the different bags you need. For instance, that's a hardware kit for the trailing arm. It says right there, here's one hardware kit for the axle mounts. Makes it a lot easier than trying to dig through all the bolts out of one bag. So we're gonna assemble the axle brackets now. This is the passenger side. It has the uh, pan hard bar mount hanging off of it. The driver's side does not. These are the lower shock mounts. And in the printed instructions, it'll tell you how far a drop you want. We're going for the seven drop. So that tells me to go here. Ryan says, make sure you know that you're putting these on so they come in. See, that one goes out, that one is not correct. That one goes in. The lower shock mounts get torqued to 31 foot-pounds. So we're going to install the axle brackets now. We've already installed the lower shock mounts. we got these 5 8 bolts, these big bolts. They will go through here plates that we drilled previously, and we're going to tighten these down to 158 foot-pounds. Put a washer on the top and a lock nut. So we're going to assemble the trailing arms now. There's rubber bushings to go on one end and the Heims ends and the spacers to go on the other. We're going to use some anti-seize on here and we're going to screw them all the way in to start and then we'll measure center to center for a recommended starting length of 21 and a half. So the starting measurement is 21 and a half, center to center. You wanna get the same amount sticking out as possible. These are threaded, one's left and one's right, so when it's in there and you need to adjust the suspension, you don't have to unbolt the trailing arm. So that's 21 and a half, that's the recommended starting point. And we'll go take that over and put both of them on. So now we're going to put the trailing arm in. We have raised the rear end a little bit on the jack stands because we are lowering the truck. So the rear end is now going to be closer up into this C-notch. Going to mount it rubber bushing towards the front. The holes are different sizes. Smaller bolt, bigger bolt in the rear. The Heims end goes on the rear at these misalignment shims, they call them, spacers, that slide into the Heims. We'll line up and that will pivot as the suspension works. We're gonna start in the middle of the five holes on the front. There's three holes adjustability on the back. We will start in the middle there and we will not do final adjustment until the bed is on, the wheels are on, and all the weight is here because on a loaded suspension, you want these arms to be parallel with the ground for best performance. And also grease zerk down so you can grease the suspension. Got that in? Yep. Get yours in. We'll 
We'll leave those loose for now, again, until the suspension is weighted and loaded so we can make sure if we need to move the holes. Next up is the differential cover. We are going to remove the original rear end cover, 10 bolt Chevy. Um, you could tip it up and save the fluid. This truck has over 200,000 miles on it, so we're gonna take the chance to go ahead and put new fluid in it. So we remove that. So the QA1 kit comes with mounting points off the rear end cover for the rear end. So we've removed the old rear end cover. Ryan is now putting sealer on the flange. You don't want to use a normal gasket, just use gasket material, gasket making material. So he's going to put that on there and then we're going to bolt this on and torque it to 19 foot pounds. All right, now we're going to torque these in a cross pattern to 19 foot-pounds. All right, I'm going to show you how to assemble the QA1 shocks. Uh, they come unassembled. Uh, they're pretty simple. I like to run your first collar all the way down. And then put a little bit of anti-seize at the base of it to try to keep it a little cleaner. Then you'll run this down on top of it. Then they come with the bearings. I also add a little bit of anti-seize on those because they will rust over time. Set that on there. Grab your shock. Slip your top collar over flip it over and you can snug it down and you really won't know how far to go with these until you get your final ride height set and you, you find out what your preload is and how high you want it to sit. So that right there will work till you get it on and on the ground. Done. So for the rear shocks you've got these two eighth inch spacers. The easiest way to do it is just doing one at a time. Slide the bolt in to hold it. Helps if you have small fingers. Tighten it up. So now we're gonna do the cross member, it bolts in. This is the for the front mount of the torque arm. It's got these two holes in it, two different sizes. Those are factory holes down inside this cross member. That we will line up and clamp it and we'll have to drill four holes here and four holes down under here. And this is the front cross member piece, the holes that need drilled. This is for the tor torque arm mount. The torque arm will mount off of here and the rear end to keep every, the rear end lined up correctly. Drill them two, and then this will go on those bolts, and then we'll wrap around these template that comes with. That'll give you the two locations here to mount and bolt this all together. 
So Ryan drilled and bolted all everything, all the holes and bolts up for the cross member. These pieces here are very handy. They have the nuts welded on the back of it and these little tabs. So if you don't remove the bed, they have little handles on it so you can sneak it through between the bed floor and this cross member and put that and then you don't have to put a wrench on it and it tightens it right up. It was pretty easy with the bed out. So now we're moving on to the torque arm. Now that he's got the cross member in, this will bolt to the rear end that we put on the differential cover. It'll take a little bit of him swiveling these rod ends to get everything all lined up and then he'll bolt it up and then we'll move on to the front mount. So now we're doing the stabilizer bar on the front of the torque arm. We swung this up here, made marks, drilled two holes. And now we're bolting that up. And we'll tighten it down. We're gonna assemble the pan hard bars now. There's two pan hard bars to do everything on this rear suspension for QA1. It's got rubber bushings and a sleeve on the end of this, an adjuster and a Heim's ends, and a right and left on this because it's adjustable. So we've already set out right and left, so we're just gonna put these together. All right, on the pan hard bar brace bar, we're gonna go in the middle hole. We've got a misalignment shim on both sides. And a washer between the two bars. And we're going to put the pan hard bar. It's a little tricky. We use the, the slim nut and washer. Grab that. This one gets misalignment, high misalignment spacers. Oh, I was on the wrong side. <laughs> So the back end's all wrapped up. We've left a lot of stuff loose. According to the instructions, we've started in the middle of the bolt holes of all the adjustments. There's like seven uh, pan hard bar adjustments. We've got it almost to the lowest setup for the shock mounts. We can go a little bit lower. Um, we can go a whole lot higher. You want everything to be pretty much parallel with the ground at ride height. Your sway bar, your trailing arms up there. And we're really pretty close right now. This one could use up one hole. Um, 
We're going to drive it a little bit and play with it. I'm not going to race this probably much at all. Um, eventually I will, so we'll, we'll adjust it and tweak it a little bit then. Um, we're going to do the finish the front end. Alignment on this, you're probably want to going to find a performance alignment shop that can understand a lot of geometry and race car stuff and because you'll make sure the wheelbase is right with all your torque arms and your trailing arm adjustments. So you want to find a very knowledgeable alignment shop to finish this all up. So I'm going to tighten some stuff up here. Thank you.